What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. As you know, we got a couple of things going on with the Q50 now. Moving forward with some projects. One in particular I talked about in the last video or at least a recent video where we are customizing or creating a custom three inch intake system so we can do a little bit of testing so we can get some real data, some real unbiased data. I put a few components, some uh, silicone elbows and some three inch aluminum tubing and some new filters and uh, the MAF adapters, the mass airflow adapters, the three inch ones, uh, so we can create a, a true three inch cold air intake system. In the last video I also mentioned Fox Craze. If you check out Fox Craze's uh, YouTube channel, you'll see the videos that he has specifically outlining the process for creating a cold air intake system uh, full length cold air intake system that gets those tubes and the filters up uh, or directly behind the front grill of your car, uh, which brings in that cool air uh, from outside. It's not contaminated by that hot engine bay air. Now, there aren't, you know, full length three inch cold air intake systems for the Q50. So I believe his is two and a half inch so he can continue to drive the car without it being tuned. Uh, but it's a, a interesting option for you if you want to do something on your own. Uh, you know, get your hands dirty a little bit, put a little effort into having something unique. Check his channel out, follow those instructions. Uh, I have, believe he has links to all the pieces that he used uh, in the description of that video. So check it out, uh, could be helpful. I myself personally am not going that route. Uh, for one reason, it's just for testing purposes and we're trying to get uh, some numbers on whether or not that larger diameter intake system is going to produce better numbers over the factory setup or even the Z1 intake tubes. So I guess I'll just show you what I have going on. So I probably could have just gone with the two and three quarter inch MAF sensors or MAF uh, adapters, uh, which is here. Uh, we have them tucked underneath so uh, it hides the cable or will hide the cable. I have them still sitting here on top because I'm not going to run this car obviously without it being tuned. Uh, this is just for mock-up test fitting purposes. It looks like sort of a short ram system. You know it's not completely blocked off from the engine bay air uh, which kind of blows. However I'm retaining the factory cowl, this air induction ram air cowl that these cars come with. This is one of the main components as to why the coal, the intake system for these cars from the factory is quite effective. Uh, it pulls air in from the grill and there's runners here that come directly to the filter. And now usually, you know, the factory box obviously uh, is located here. It encapsulates the factory filter and therefore keeping out or mitigating the effect that the warm engine bay air has on the intake air. So you can see the opening right here of where that air comes in from the grill. So at least now I, with these filters I have it lined up directly with that part of the, um, the cowl. So that air is forced right into the filter and run it'll run right across the top of the filter here so hopefully um, the engine bay air doesn't affect it all that much but again just for testing purposes getting this thing on the dyno and seeing what kind of numbers it can make with a three inch with the three inch MAF adapter uh, you know there's gonna be a big fan in front of the car the hood's gonna be open the amount of engine bay air making it into the filters is gonna be minimal um, not as not even close to what it would be if you have the hood closed and you're, you know, racing around a track. But even still, that airflow is going to come from the grill uh, through this cowl and, you know, hit the filter at high velocity. So, again, hopefully it's relatively effective and hopefully the engine bay air that makes it into the filters is relatively minimal. But that being said, again, retained or I'm using just the Z1 intake tubes, two and three quarter inch inside diameter for these. Uh, so it's quite large. I just had a have a piece of aluminum in there to make sure I can put a clamp uh, and not crush the tubes so it's solid and then just a, a step up uh, silicone adapter to the three inch MAF. I, I could have and now looking at it I probably should have just done the 2.75 because again that's really uh, all the air that our factory throttle bodies can take anyway um, but nonetheless this is three inch it's a big AEM dry filter should bring in a lot of air. Stepping down from three inch 
to two and three quarters, not gonna be a big deal. There's actually aftermarket intake systems that do that intentionally, have a larger intake portion, and then gets narrow as it enters the throttle body. Uh, their theory is that it increases the velocity of the intake air into the engine. Um, you know, as you go smaller, uh, you take in a lot of air, and then like uh, putting your thumb over a garden hose, it makes that air go faster as it enters the engine. So hopefully, uh, that has a, a positive effect. Try to use your imagination and, and move those air boxes out of your mind. This is what it would look like. I think most people that install the short ram intakes don't keep this cowl for some reason. Uh, but the filters fit in just fine. They're, they're not going to rub. They won't make any noise. You know, this will be secure down, obviously. You know, this is what makes this cowl so effective is these runners or it has you know runners that go directly to the filter so it, it makes sense to keep this and utilize this uh, in this type of setup because again it's going to force the, that air from the grill directly to the filters and because of where it flows in it's going up and over and right into the largest surface area the side of that filter uh, engine bay air should be should be minimal but I think it looks pretty cool, um, but the way I, the reason I did it like this is because obviously you don't want to drive uh, the car, or the car's not going to run properly. If I plug the MAF sensors in uh, to those adapters there, fired the car up, uh, it might run a little bit funny. So I want to be able to keep the factory set up on the car, drive it up to Soho in Charlotte, have a couple of tools with me, pull them out when I get in the parking lot and then roll it up on the dyno with this new setup on. So it's an easy swap over. Should be really, really quick. I can just basically pull this part right out of the intake tubes and uh, have her set up in just a matter of minutes to hit the dyno. My expectations are pretty low because as you know, I've said over and over and I've showed dyno results and we've talked numbers that cold air intakes, larger cold air intakes for these cars, the Q50, they just really don't yield that many additional horsepower they just they just don't uh, it's the way the car is set up the way the car is tuned from the factory the way uh, the cams the factory cams that this car has it bringing in more air really doesn't make all that much difference uh, the g37 the older 370z's they respond a bit better to cold air intakes uh, but even still uh, i'll link a video in the description below uh, someone actually did finally some impartial unbiased testing with the uh, they had aftermarket intakes on the car I believe there were the Takeda intakes then they installed the full length admin tuning three inch cold air intakes and dynoed the car and I think they maybe picked up three horsepower um, that in my opinion is with the margin of error you could literally literally put that car back on the dyno the next day and not see any gains uh, same dyno same conditions three to four horsepower that's minimal it looks good on a dyno sheet it's really not worth it and you're not going to feel the difference to be quite honest don't get me wrong they look cool and i'm sure you see some gains over the factory setup in the g's and the older z's uh, the q50 first of all full length intakes are intakes aren't available for this car aside from that they just don't respond well even to the takeda intakes or takedas they the factory setup is, is pretty sufficient and pretty high quality actually. So that being said, length of the intakes are not going to make the difference for performance, for the dyno testing. What makes the difference is this right here, is the three inch diameter MAF adapters. Compared to the factory ones, which are quite small, two and a half inch uh, interior inside diameter. Um, so that's a pretty narrow neck. Um, you know, and they flow into the Z1 tubes, which are two and three quarter inch. Um, but this is where that air is being monitored. You know, that volume of air is being monitored right here in this narrow neck. So this is where the difference comes in, uh, having a three inch and not necessarily the, the full length. And again, because we have the hood open, the air blowing directly on the filters, the temperature really isn't going to have any impact whatsoever. So I'm quite interested to see how they perform the three inch over the two and a half inch necks. We'll see, but we know they fit. You know, they fit with the factory air dam. Um, I should just be able to pop this off, pop the air boxes off, and stick that assembly on there and clamp them in, and, and we'll be good to go. Um, hopefully we can get this tested sooner rather than later. 
I'm curious to see what kind of number she makes. I have some other plans for the car as well. Uh, hopefully we can take care of that during that same visit to Soho. Good stuff coming. I want to say within the next month we'll get there, but but uh, we'll see how it goes. At least we know uh, what we're dealing with here with these intakes. You guys want to try this out uh, ahead of me? That would be cool too. Again, just my schedule just kind of dictates when I can get things done or make a trip up to Charlotte. It's about a two hour drive for me, so I can't just get it done during lunch break. Uh, uh, but I'll put some links in the description to a couple of the components here. Uh, but again, if you guys want to try them out ahead of me, go for it. Just a few components, relatively inexpensive. The filters are really the most expensive parts. The MAF tubes are not expensive at all uh, and they fit good. They seem to be decent quality. The MAF sensors fit in them, no problem. And I wanted to just keep the Z1 intake tubes rather than going with an aftermarket intake system. Uh, is I wanted to uh, retain and continue to utilize the strut tower brace. The car obviously was set up for kind of mountain run, spirited driving, autocross. <laughs> Talk about scheduling conflicts with autocross guy. Anyway, um, the Z1 tubes, they're flexible. They allow me to keep that strut tower brace, but when you go with the aftermarket and the, 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 the metal tubes, uh, they don't fit uh, properly under the brace and where the bracket uh, mounts to the strut tower so you, you can't you can't use it uh, and I need it I want it even if even if the impact that that has is minimal it's better than nothing in my opinion if larger diameter intake systems work for the Q50 this will prove that to be true uh, if we see minimal gains then we'll know everything that I've set up to this point is is correct I gotta get the uh, factory set up back on so I can drive this car again. My filters are dry now and nice and clean, so the car should run a little bit better than it was. Not that it was running bad, uh, but they were very, very dirty. So thank you guys very much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comment section below. I'm curious to hear your input, obviously. Uh, keep you posted on when we get scheduled to get to Soho and get this thing uh, back on the dyno and retuned. Other good things coming for the Q50. Stick around, you guys. I don't want to miss it. Appreciate the community support. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next one.